Welcome once again, everybody. Boyd here with you. Oh, I'm back with another update on our Enterprise refit build. And uh, our last video, we showed you um, some stuff that we were working on there with the neck area. And I talked about our next video was going to be about the secondary hull. So I just wanted to show you guys a, a few tips that I've learned along the way after building a couple of these that might help you out when you're getting ready to put yours together if you're building one of these for the first time. Um, the secondary hull is pretty much the main structure of the whole entire model. That's where everything connects to. So everything has to be really nice and solid with this going forward. So as you build the model out, if you have some weak spots in this area here, it'll show up a little bit later on down your build. So make sure you, you know, really take your time with this and make sure everything's fit together nice and tight. Everything's been really well glued and everything's nice and strong and you shouldn't have any problems. But uh, what I want to talk to you guys about is um, we'll start off here first with the basic uh, parts of the secondary hull. We have uh, four parts that have been put together here. We have the two sides, the bottom, and the fantail section here, this little separate piece for the hangar bay entrance. And um, this particular model kit has some kind of uh, different uh, methods that they use as far as creating the joints that connect everything together, and I'm going to talk about those. Um, I don't know the exact uh, uh, mechanical term for it, but you sort of have this uh, lever and tongue type uh, joint here. It's not just a straightforward, uh, you know, slot that the uh, parts fit together and it's kind of a, it's got kind of a, you know, if you look at it from a side angle, it's kind of like this and like that. And um, I think that was their attempt to do some kind of light blocking, you know, they, they probably figured out that, you know, down the road people building this kit were going to do lighting on it. So that was kind of the, the reasoning that they used. But, um, Using that method, it makes it a little bit weird when you go to put these pieces together. Now, um, one of the areas that I like to concentrate on right off the bat with this kit is when you're gluing the belly and the two side parts together, you have these joints here on the side. Now, when this is all finished and done the way it should be, uh, your seam right here should match pretty much the other... Uh, panel lines that are on the sides of the secondary hull. They should they should be about the same width and they should be about the same depth. And so you want to make sure you pay attention to that. Um, so what happens here, you guys, is when you put these two side pieces on, you're going to see that uh, you're going to have to sort of, when you put the first one on, you're going to have to sort of tilt it a little bit, put it down onto the slot, and then kind of move it back like this and you'll see that then it'll sort of go down in all the way and bottom out and you'll get a really nice tight fit here but the problem is is when you go to do it on the other side with these two parts here that butt together it doesn't quite allow you to do that so you're going to have to be doing some kind of you know uh squeezing and kind of pressuring and kind of hold it at different angles and working it down in there and i would recommend that um before you apply your glue to put this all together you do a couple of dry runs here without any glue and kind of get used to how you're going to have to manipulate these parts to get them to fit together nice and tight. Because I've seen some builds of this out there on the internet where they have a pretty large gap right here, the, the seam that they've got. They've got it all filled in really nice, but the seam is actually deeper and wider than, than the rest of the lines are on the hull. So you want to make sure that you get that all nice and tight like that down in there. And it just takes a little bit of fooling around to get these sides to work. You can almost kind of see it if you look on the inside, how they kind of overlap each other. And then you have the same thing that kind of happens up here on the top. Um, if you try to put this top piece just straight down on here like that, just, you know, forcing it straight down, you'll see that, that normally like one side of it will go together nice, like you can see it did right there. But on the other side, it, well, the wires aren't helping here. Let me tuck these in really quick. But you'll see that the other side doesn't really want to do that. So if like you start off on this side and get that down in there nice and tight like it should then over here you can see no matter how much you kind of push on it or, or do anything with it there it doesn't want to close up all the way so you got to kind of get your fingers in here and you got to kind of push out from the inside and just like I said work it around a little bit and then uh, eventually it will just kind of you'll feel it'll just kind of snap into place so it's kind of a weird thing and being that it's coming together and it's on a curve like this it just makes it a little bit weird how that has to go together but um, if you keep working at it, you might have to get in there and do a little bit of fine sanding. Uh, take a hobby knife and get in there if there's any excess flash or anything in there. Because these kits are getting pretty old now. The molds are. So there could be a little bit of uh, obstruction or whatever. 
uh, or a little bit of you know too much uh, plastic that was put in the mold and has made it a little bit oversized. So you just you know need to work on that and just clean it up a little bit and just go a little bit at a time until you can get it you know to fit together really nice and tight. And that will help you out a whole lot. You can see that when you get it, everything um, comes together pretty tight. You don't have any huge gaps or anything like that. Now, one of the issues with this kit is um, you're going to have these these steps right here, especially on these pylon mounts. Um, there's really not a lot you can do about that. The only thing you're going to be able to do is after you get this all glued together and it's all nice and solid, you're going to have to come in here with your hobby knife and you're going to have to kind of start scraping along. Like you'll see that the one on the, the starboard side here, it's more towards the front where you got this sort of overhang. In other words, the top part is, is uh, wider than the bottom part. You don't want to just blob a whole bunch of putty in there. You want to kind of bring this down a little bit and try to get them uh, to where they're matching fairly close uh, with a combination of, like I said, taking your hobby knife and just getting in here, putting it on its, its edge like this and just start scraping until you get that to come down a little bit and then finish up with some sandpaper and set it until it's nice and flush. On the other side here, you can see that that side of it actually fits really good, but on the back side, uh, you have an overhang on the top again. So it's just a, it's just a misalignment. It's a, it's a defect in the uh, design of the model. There's not a lot you can do about that except go back and clean that all up. And you can do that at the very end when you, once you've got this all glued together and nice and solid and your pylons are in place and all that good stuff. So just kind of, you know, be aware of that too. For our Arboretum windows here on the side, pretty much the same thing I showed you guys back when we put the, uh, the photo etch in the uh, officer's lounge area on the saucer at the back of the bridge there. You want to trim your... Um, your photo etch part down until it'll kind of drop in there just about flush you don't want that to be over top of the existing opening here because if you do that you're gonna to have to put extra putty around there to make it level out uh, you don't want to see a sudden step up or whatever in the shape of that so when it's all sanded smooth and everything's you know done you got a nice beautiful flush fit like that okay and that's basically how you're gonna go about that so uh, using that method that I showed you before where you get your um, photo etch all nice and trimmed it's sitting in here flush put a piece of tape across that so it's holding it in there nice and flush and then come from the backside and dab in a little bit of your CA glue and get that glued in place what you want to be careful of is inside here you want to make sure you don't pile up a whole bunch of CA glue around the area there so you want this little opening inside of here to remain nice and smooth if you do get a little bit of CA glue globbed in there just come in there with either a hobby knife or your your knurling bit or something like that on a Dremel tool and just grind all that back out of there and get that all back and cleaned up. The reason why is um, when you go to put your glass in here, you're not going to be able to use the kit glass anymore if you go ahead and use these uh, photo etch parts. As I mentioned before, I like to use just little pieces of clear acetate. I think it works fantastic. It looks as clear as glass. It's a little flexible so it can make a little bit of curve because this does have a slight curve to it. And um, if you don't make that nice and flat in there, your glass will not go in there and sit nice and flush against this window frame like you want it to. Okay, so just kind of think about that too. Keep that whole area nice and open and nice and clear, and then uh, you won't have any problem putting your glass in there. You just cut it out slightly oversized, and you'll just be able to tack it down with some canopy glue um, in each corner or whatever, maybe one in the middle, and then uh, you'll be good to go on that. Okay, so... The next big thing that's a big issue with this kit, you guys, is uh, uh, a, lot of pro uh, a lot of people have reported the same problem ever since this kit's been out, basically, uh, is that the pylons don't fit very well. And uh, it causes uh, gaps in the uh, pylon mounts here between the secondary hull because what you're doing here is you're putting this on and then you're, um, you're, you're basically pinching it in place when you put the top half on top of that, right? So if there's any obstructions or anything not right there, the top part's not going to go down in there and sit nice and tight like it should, all right? So the very first thing that I that I do is uh, I completely remove these inner uh, braces that are in here, you guys. Now, that might sound a little scary to you guys, but trust me, it doesn't matter. Um, once you take your Dremel tool and just completely get rid of these, you're going to solve about um, probably 80% of the problem here as far as why these... Uh, pylons don't fit. You'll see if you lay them down in there that uh, there's still going to be plenty of um, contact area to glue these. Now what I do is uh, I glue the pylons on before I put the top part on here 
and I'll use some five minute epoxy and I'll go in here and I'll just lather it all around this this area right here over the top of it um, you know on the sides and everything down below it and then uh, before it's completely dry and it's still fairly soft then I'll go ahead and put my top part on and glue everything down you want to do that before it's completely dry because in case you make your uh, your you know your epoxy too thick or whatever you'll have a problem when you try to uh, to seal it up again kind of the same problem you had before you'll cut you'll kind of recreate that so do all that and then um, you'll find that your pylons will go in there a lot easier and you won't have the gaps in the hull same thing remove the tabs on the upper part here you can see I've just recently grinded those off I forgot to do that before I actually light block it so I'm now I'm gonna have to come back and just put a little bit of you know black paint over this right here um, and then uh, make sure that way we don't have any light leaks coming up through there but um, the second part is, if you look at the pylons here, you guys, um, the two halves, the way it comes out of the box is you'll see it has some injector marks right here. Uh, and these are slightly raised. There's these little circles right here that are slightly raised. And uh, if you put this together and you look at it from the side, before you, before you shave those down, you'll notice that the very bottom of this thing will be kind of something like that. It won't go together all the way. So that's another issue that you want to correct before you finish putting these in because that little bit of spread right there is also going to create pressure on this hull and the top and the bottom part and not make it want to come together all the way because they've got the tolerances really really close right there okay so all you have to do is take your dremel tool and just shave those down until they're flush on both sides of your pylons they're exactly the same on both sets and then this will come together um, like I showed you here completely flush like that and that eliminates that problem so now I'll just kind of demonstrate we'll put the uh, well let me do it this way we'll get this part here and tucked in first I gotta tuck in all these little wires and everything um, and then we can get this kind of semi lined up and then we can sneak our pile on in here okay so that when I show you now that this whole thing clamps together nice and tight if you can see this little seam right here that's usually a problem where you have a big gap there where it doesn't want to close up and right here okay you can see it came together nice and tight all the way around the pylon itself the mount the lower part here it's all together nice and tight the only issue we have is that little step that I talked about and we can uh, after this is all glued and all nice and solid um, we can come back with our with our file or a piece of sandpaper or like the, the hobby knife and just get that all worked out and then do our paint job on the uh, external hull. Um, so there you go guys on both sides that'll work for you and then you won't have any issue at all with the uh, um, pylons going in this thing and it's it's a major pain if you don't do that it you're gonna have a lot of struggle a lot of a lot more putty work that you're gonna have to do in here and like I said you really don't want to putty over huge gaps you want to try to get anytime you're building any kind of models you you want to try to get you know just start examining everything and figuring out why things don't fit do a little bit of shaving here and there a little bit of you know sanding until you get the parts to fit the way they were intended to from the factory as close as possible that way that's later on that's saving you some work down the road you're not gonna have to do uh, nearly as much putting you don't have as much chance of the putty cracking or coming off later on because you're not covering up this huge gap and things like that so that's just uh, kind of modeling 101 Okay, so the other thing I wanted to mention here about the uh, secondary hull is um, back here, you can see I like to put the fantail part on as soon as I get the, uh, the belly and the two side pieces put together. And the reason why is that um, you'll see that these side pieces here, they're going to want to kind of come together a little bit and be uh, not quite flush to this uh, fantail here. And it's a real struggle to try to do that after you've already, you know, if you're putting the fantail part on there last, and like the instructions have you doing, they, they want you to put that on a little bit later on. But I find that putting it on now, um, at the very beginning, you've got more angles you can work with it at. You can glue from the inside and not have to worry about glue getting in your little seams right here and keeping that all nice and clean. And you can just kind of handle it and work with it. And you can grab a hold of this part here and kind of pull it out. Now this fantail does have these little tabs on the side that are supposed to keep these walls you know outside like that but they're not very big and they're not very strong and by the, by the time you put glue on them they start to get soft and these walls can just you know kind of pull themselves back in and not be flush so I took a little piece of styrene sprue 
after I got this all glued together and I just cut it until it was just the right size and I wedged it in right here on the on the top edge of each of these walls to keep those out and keep them flush um, until it dried and I let this thing dry like a good three or four days that way it was totally cured 100% and it didn't have any chance of uh, you know shrinking back up or coming back together on me once I pulled that piece out of there and as you can see it dried it's all nice and solid now totally sturdy and uh, it'll never move and so it'll everything will fit together a lot better going forward too okay so that's another little thing now I do recommend that if you're gonna do it that way you go ahead and totally light block light block this part right here do all your detail painting on it it's supposed to have this little black lip around the edge of the fan tail opening kind of on the tongue area right here in other words the black part of the floor of the shuttle bay doesn't end with the shuttle bay part itself it actually extends a little bit onto the uh, tongue of the fan tail right there so paint that detail on there go ahead and get all your little lenses done you know you'll get little masks uh, usually in the different types of masking sets that are out there so do all your light blocking on these get them painted get them all put in there uh, because you can't put these in you can put the top one in but you can't put the two side ones in very easy from the back side so go ahead and put all those in before you put all this together there are masks included at least in the mask design set that I'm using uh, that that mask these individual panels you got one for each little light opening here on the top and these panels right here I think these are tractor beam emitters uh, that cover those up so when you go to paint your hull the white color later on um, you can mask all this stuff off individually okay so no worry about that now the other big issue with this is the shuttle bay you guys people are struggling figuring out how to get the shuttle bay in here once this is all put together instead of putting it in one side and then putting it all down together like that well an easy way to do that is um, simply remove this uh, this cross brace that we have um, that normally is in place right up here towards the front just cut that out don't throw it away though you guys save that because after we're done with everything here you can just reach in there and glue that all back in place you wanna you wanna keep that there because that uh, reinforces this front area here a little bit and keeps it from flexing so that when we put our uh, our round um, deflector dish housing on here in the front it doesn't distort um, and wanna pop that off or you know create some kind of gap in that or anything you wanna keep this all its original shape and everything so that that reinforcement piece is pretty important if you do happen to lose it you can just get some really thick sprue and glue that back in there a little bit later on which is definitely what I'll be doing but let me show you um, how the shuttle bay will pop in here now <clears throat> this model has another small little design defect and uh, what you have is you have down in here let me get my pointer you have these little locator pins that are here on the uh, that are supposed to snap into the floor of the shuttle bay there's one here and I believe there was one right here that I you know basically shaved off now the reason I shaved those off is because it turns out they're about a millimeter or two off and what it is is they have the uh, the shuttle bay just slightly a little bit too far forward so when everything snaps into place you wind up having a gap here between the uh, the floor of the shuttle bay and the tongue of the fan tail right here and so you'll get a big light leak right there if you got some lighting going on back here and you'll have to go in there and putty that and then that's gonna make it a lot more difficult if you've got all this painted or you want to paint it later on because you're trying to reach in this opening right here and clean up everything and of course not get any putty or paint going up into your fully detailed beautiful shuttle bay up in here which you put all that hard work into you don't want to ruin that so just by clipping those little pieces off you don't want to clip off the whole entire thing just the little uh, extended part of it there because these are still bases that uh, the shuttle bay floor can can glue to and that'll eliminate that problem it'll allow the shuttle bay to fully go back to the rear as I'll demonstrate now there's after we go ahead and remove this this cross brace right here it leaves the whole front part of this open and I'll show you a really easy way now you can see I've got this control board you can see how long ago I built this shuttle bay I told you guys I was gonna be cheating a little bit this shuttle bay I actually built uh, golly probably about six years ago or so at least because I can tell because I'm I was still using the old magnet wire which I haven't used that for a long time but I've got this separate little control board which is an old uh, tenant controls board here for the uh, the uh, light chaser effect on the floor of the shuttle bay there the entrance and uh, that'll be just kind of tucked in underneath it here when I drop it down in but let me show you how this is gonna go in we'll just kind of tuck our wires down here now all we have to do is kind of tilt it a little bit 
and with this cross brace here missing now you can see that we can shove the shuttle bay way forward like that right then we just kind of work our way in and it drops right in between these two edges of the pylons and then it just goes right into place here you guys it just uh, fits right in there let me make sure I got my board kind of centered and then we're gonna work our way back here and now I'm just gently putting some pressure on this from the very front pushing on it from right here and I'm just pushing it back you can see it it's gonna get some pressure there because it kind of uh, squeezes together but if you look you can see that the shuttle bay floor actually comes up and fits this absolutely perfectly there's no gap there whatsoever you guys um, if there's any kind of light leak there it'll wind up being really minimal you'll probably be just uh, be able to dribble some uh, like what I like to do for that is I'll dribble a little bit of canopy glue in there and I'll just come back over with my paint here and lightly airbrush or mist over that and that'll completely take care of that but there's your shuttle bay guys it's in there it's in there nice and perfect it looks great it fits perfect you want to do that um, you know you'll still have room here where you can slide your arboretum in here to get that in there and get that in place so uh, you know you already obviously want to have all your other wiring and everything done in here that's you know gonna light up all your hull and secondary windows and your arboretum and all that stuff but yeah so now getting it back out um, you just kind of slide it forward here come back like that and get to that kind of thickest part right there and uh, this will just pop right back out of there you guys no problem at all we got our wires tangled up here so don't want to rip any wires off I got one wrapped around my resistor here and it's decided to grab a hold of that pretty good but you get the point you guys um, this this will all uh, Oh, I see what happened here we got underneath of that little I'm gonna have to use my tweezers to get that out of there again I wouldn't attempt this you guys until I had everything all cleaned up I'm just doing that for uh, demonstration purpose for you guys here let me get this unhooked it just got hooked around that little barb of a wire right there there we go so your shuttle bay will fit in nice like that you guys no problem at all and uh, you'll have plenty of you know you want to put your glue down on these pads first on these lower bulkheads or whatever so it'll sit down in there and then once everything's been put in the model and everything it's it's not going to go anywhere it's it's in there for good so that's the basic steps for the secondary hull you guys just uh you know like i said take your time work on these joints clean them up if you have to and when you're done with this it should all fit nice and flush nice and tight like that and not have any big gaps or seams or anything and you should just have to maybe lightly come over this with a skim coat of uh like I'll use my perfect plastic putty and just go over that uh, wait till it dries a little bit and I'll just take a damp towel and just wipe over that and get rid of the excess and whatever's left will be in that little slot nice and smooth and it'll look just like the rest of the uh, the panel lines that are on our secondary hull here okay and everything will look great so I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the secondary hull later on there are a couple things you're gonna want to do with the um, with the uh, uh, deflector dish housing here at the front now I guess what I'll kind of lead up to on that is that I like to use the the existing mount location um, on this model kit and the reason why they have done the engineering to figure out what the center of gravity is on this kit guys so uh, if you go a little bit too far towards the back you're gonna be nose heavy and if you go a little bit further forward you're gonna be tail heavy And this model is with all the electronics all the wiring everything done it's fairly heavy so um, this is just thin plastic here on the bottom so if you're using one of those aftermarket um, uh, like microphone type jacks that I see a lot of people using it might look good or be okay in the very beginning and seem like it's gonna be alright but over time you're talking about this model sitting there for years and years and if you've moved it back here towards the rear you're gonna be nose heavy on the front and I think slowly over time that that plastic will start to flex or whatever and it'll 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 start taking a little bit of a nose dive and uh, maybe you want to have your ship looking like that but I like to have mine sitting on a stand you know nice and level and nice and square and everything um, so that forward mount um, needs a little bit of an attention because it's not the strongest thing and I'm going to show you some easy tricks for that when we come to that a little bit further along or we can uh, add some additional support in there and use some epoxy to make that like totally rock solid you want to make sure that when you um, get ready to glue your uh, 
uh, deflector housing onto here that you get all this paint scraped off, any primer, any paint, so that you've got like totally raw plastic here because that is a big area where the where there's going to be a lot of um, stress and load on the model with weight and all that kind of stuff. This hole is going to want to like pop apart. And so that being totally secure and never going to go anywhere will go a long way to making this thing stable and uh, strong over a really long period of time. So those are special things that you want to pay attention to with this particular kit. Okay, guys. Well, it's just a kind of a short and sweet video on this one. Um, I'll be back again just in a little while here where I'm actually going to start putting stuff together. We're going to start moving forward. We're going to get the secondary hull all uh, sorted out here. We're going to get the rest of our lighting put in. You can see on the bottom of this, I've already got a strip of LED lighting for the uh, lighting of the hangar bay. Uh, we've got one little light here at the tail. It's an SMD that's going to light up this little light right on the top here. And then um, we're going to show you how to run all the wires and everything. Um, we've got the cool little chaser effect going on in the bottom of our shuttle bay. Plus we've got this little uh, this little stripe here in the middle that I've light blocked and made it work out so that that can light up too. So that's kind of a dual special effect that I did. I kind of only did one or the other in the past, but I decided to do both this time. So I think it should look pretty neat. And we've got these little uh, turbo lift tubes up here that have a little bit of lighting in them here too. Uh, and we'll show you how we're gonna work all that out. But yeah, um, follow along with those couple little tips there, you guys, especially for your first, you first timers out there that haven't built this kit before and you'll reduce a lot of the frustration with building this model you guys we're going to come back and do our little airlock lighting detail that i talked about last time and uh yeah we'll go ahead and get this uh secondary hull all finished up and like i said that's the foundation of the entire model we'll have our wires run up through our pylons for all of our power and lighting we're going to need to do in the nacelles and all that good stuff so i hope you'll tune into the next episode until then, everybody, like always, take care and happy modeling, everyone.